This podcast contains explicit content, language, and sexual situations. It is intended for adults 18 years of age and older. Views, thoughts, and opinions expressed are not those of any specific employer, group, or individual. Fed up with the rat race, we decided to sell everything and move to Cancun, Mexico. Now we do what we love. Work, party, and play at the Desire Resort. After 15 years in the lifestyle together, we thought we saw it all. But we were so wrong. So wrong. Oh my God, so wrong. Now we want to share the fun that we get to have every day. So come to room 77. Let's play. You know what? I thought we had dinner reservations at 7.30, and I'm still not wearing panties. Not panties. On my head. <laughs> and the angry dolphin gets wait, kicked wait. off. Wait, wait. What is the angry dolphin? The angry dolphin is when the, is when the male approaches the female from behind and accidentally proceeds to the wrong exit hole, and the female gives a nice... <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Just like prison. How many times have you been here? Uh, let's see. We went to Pearl last year, same time, and this is the first time I had Desire, but we've also been to Hidden and Hedo. How did you <laughs> behave yourself at Hidden? Well, mostly because of my wife will, will yell at me yeah. if, I do, if I misbehave. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine you get yelled at a lot. I do. But she's a very lovely wife. <laughs> Unfortunately, 14 years, she is numb to this. 14 years? We've been together for 15, so... It's equally as numb. But if it was, we won. <laughs> do you have a highlight of this trip? Highlight of this trip? No, we're still new into it. Two days? Oh, there was a time. Yesterday, about <laughs> midday. <laughs> Set in the moment. I had oh. female A in front of me. <laughs> and then <laughs> female B, kind of like Little Spoon. It was a tri-spoon. <laughs> And all of a sudden we had, what would you aggressive? say? Aggressive. Male aggressive. Male aggressive. Partaking. And I think he was going somewhere under the legs and he was, it was a three for one hit. The only problem, he grabbed mine instead of theirs. Oh. Yeah. Maybe yes. he was checking for a hernia. You didn't I didn't know. know. Yeah. And I gave him the, eh, 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 all right, I want to get started because we started. Mm -hmm. So I want to actually get started on the started part. Are all your devices on instead of airplane mode? I say silent. Mm. Well, and then I right. noticed my dead follower. So on Monday, I mm -hmm. lost one. You did? I did. Well, listen, you don't know what happened. Maybe uh, they actually are dead. Oh, no, don't say that. It's possible. Maybe they refollowed the next day or something. All right, so you have to get going. I have to let you go because you have to go do the fashion show. Mm -hmm. are you, you think you'll see that couple where the guy had the largest penis he had the largest penis in the world so much so that he took the workshop this is a first tell them what happened because i can't even i know I even. we you know we look around a lot and so we noticed the couple on sharing the bed with them at during no the it was the bed next to them oh it was yes 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 oh because the other people were looking too yeah they were looking but that woman oh asked. and that guy asked can i touch it <laughs> I mean, like it's a pet. Like it's a pet. Yeah. Can I touch your boa constrictor? <laughs> it's not going to bite me. <laughs> so that's even worse. You leaned across the aisle and said, can I touch it? And that was during the actual lingam massage part. It was so funny. I was wondering that because this, the people they were sharing the bed with um, only spoke Spanish because yeah. I had to explain it in my bad Spanish. Yeah, I felt bad actually for the... For the couple that was sitting next to that guy, I don't know how you could lie next to him. And, and get hard. And not be emasculated. I mean, <laughs> it was that gigantic. The entire, everybody was looking at Everyone it. Everyone was. And, and he gets up and walks around naked. Why wouldn't he? This guy loves his cocks. So he walks around. He's like, why would I wear pants? And, and his wife was so funny. She's like, he's used to being objectified. It's totally fine. Because I'm just like, I'm sorry, but I mean, look at it. I can't stop. And he just laughs. Yeah. And she's like, oh, don't worry. He's used to it. I just want to ask him. I want to go back and ask him what it's life, what it's like going through life with it. Because my suspicion is life is so much easier with it. You're so funny. Someone left a comment on the, you got it. I didn't. Someone left a, a comment about the, the last episode. Yeah, on the website. Yeah, what did it say? Because I just woke up and you told me, oh, look at what somebody wrote. And said it, you obviously don't know about shirt cocking or something. Shirt cocking. So I still, now I'm even more confused. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha!
Because in our last episode, we talked about guys who wear uh, just a shirt and nothing else. Ball's length? Is that what we called it? Yeah. Uh-huh. Someone left a comment that said, obviously, you don't know about... Shirt cocking. Shirt cocking. So I don't... I'm, now I'm even more confused. But thank you for uh, for leaving that and making me more confused. Also, I watched the Sarah Clayton live video feed on Facebook of Desire Questions. That story reminded me of Sarah because Sarah always... She's sweet. She listens and she... Makes fun of the funny... Yeah, she, <laughs> she, she tweets. She it. tweets. She listens. And uh, and she she makes fun of us. Mm-hmm. Oh God! Uh, she looks great. She does. Yeah. I li- I was. <laughs> you heard, but you didn't watch. I wasn't watching. I, I know. I was, I was watching. Yeah. I'm not good at sitting down and being still. I know. Well, she does a really good job. I just wanted to, to say, great job, great. Sarah. We mm-hmm. can't wait to see you in November because she's coming to do. Well, she's a play. She's a playmate. Yeah. For for um. Playboy is for, the word. Well, yeah, for. but I was gonna say like I don't know when. For a lot of stuff. She's well, she's she's a model. And, and yeah. a bunny, uh, a rabbit. Wait, no. <laughs> she a was a rabbit. She was Wait. a magician's rabbit. Yes. And she's doing a whole like how to do sexy photos, like for the everyone does the boudoir photos. Yeah, like and, posing. She's yeah. how to pose. Like a Playboy model, I think is what the actual title is. I don't know, but you can go to her website and yeah. her Twitter because she has a lot of followers and she has a website and you can do all that. And check that out. And if you're coming the second week in November, make sure to check out her posing workshop. Mm-hmm. We'll probably be there with her. I mean, not with not her, wi- not, not in posing. the workshop posing. <laughs> or maybe we will. Maybe that would be funny. I don't know. Maybe I'm going to be a mannequin on the side. You know what? I may go. Well, it depends what day it falls on, really. Mm, true. So, so we will see you then, Sarah. I uh, thought you were going to say back about the shirt cocking that there was a guy on the Thursday workshop and his wife dared him to walk into the workshop with a shirt and no pants. He and he did. did have those sandals. He did. He came in and in she just, just a got shirt. just the biggest kick out of it. Just a shirt and sandals. So it's like, hey, man, what's up? What, you don't like this look? <laughs> he was like, like, oh, man. He See goes, started. you know, it's actually kind of freeing. And then I turned around. He had his shorts on. He's like, I, I, I was lying. I'm really uncomfortable. <laughs> yes. Well, it is uncomfortable. <laughs> and then another person pointed out that there was a woman in a tank top and no bottom, which I had never seen before. But he was right. He came over to me. He said, I just want to point this out. There's oh, a woman over there in a tank top and she has no bottoms on. So, um... <laughs> I was like, yeah, I, I got to be honest. I've never seen that before. So I don't know. But anyway, I opened Pandora's box. There you go. I, I wanted to make this really short. And then we go on and on and on about other stuff. Oh, wait. The website. Oh, the Desire website. Right, Not so- our website, but the Desire one. We have made it and landed on the DesireExperience.com website under daily activities. So, uh, yeah, we're on the Desire website now with uh, information about us. You can go check that out. Huge. Yeah, it was really great. So we're on there now. You can contact us directly. Another way to contact us uh, to tell us about... Whatever you want. Even short shirts coming down to just your balls. Yeah, exactly. The one thing that I wanted to talk about that keeps being a constant thing is safety in Mexico. And I know it sort of sounds like a boring subject. Sounds like a boring thing to sort of talk about. Yeah. Uh, So let's try to make this semi-interesting. Okay. Okay. Uh, How many times have you been kidnapped here? I've been kidnapped four times. Four times. I've been kidnapped five. But that... That last one didn't really count. No, I just got lost. <laughs> Turned out. <laughs> Turned out I was just... Just took a left. I took a left and landed. <laughs> oh I, was in a, I was in a pharmacy and uh, I said, let me go. And they said, go. Who knew? <laughs> How many times have you been shot at? Oh, I, I two? How many times have you been shot? Yeah, just that's why, where I hesitated. I have not actually been shot. Well, you're like the Matrix. Yeah, I am. Yeah. I, have a special, I have a special set of skills. What else do they talk about in, in Mexico? Uh, All the American tourists that get killed by the cartels yeah so let's try to be a little bit serious um the media is is really a big proponent in this and we should also make a disclaimer yes you can get kidnapped here you could get killed here you could get hurt or robbed or whatever it's just like any other place in the world you have to be safe and we are also talking only about Quintana Roo which is the state that we're in and the state we know about I mean you know a little bit more about the cartels because you're obsessed with them. Obsessed. So, so really briefly, what is going on with the cartels? Always, Well, they're always fighting over territory. Right. And that's what's causing a lot of the problems. And if you were to draw a map in Mexico, where would you say most of the problems actually are? Border. Border towns, right? North, yeah. there's some out west close to or across from Cabo, I forget, Mazatlan or... The Acapulco's bad and then Manzanillo, but it, 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 most of the stuff is going to the states. So, And what happens in the media is for some 
some reason, people see murder and which, by the way, half of the murders that happen in Mexico are cartel related. There's really nothing. Nobody is going after tourists. Nobody wants to go after tourists. There's no reason to go after tourists. So when you read, it's it's a little bit like reading someone was shot in New York. We should be careful going to the United States. Right. It's thousands of miles away. Here's the problem. The Americans are are scared to, to really do anything. It's really the only ones who comment and ask about the safety. And I don't think it's so much about the Americans, but about the American media. When I read the internet and I see anything that says something, if I see something that's like um, aliens, I'm clicking on that. Mm. Well, really? Yeah, okay. like uh, alien life, anything like that. We may have found intelligent life in outer space. Boom, I'm clicking on it. Are you in like those chat rooms or something? Like, no, not yet. Not yet. Uh, I had no idea you loved alien stuff. I don't love alien stuff. I thought you okay? just love science. I love... That is science. Not really. Yeah, it is. Opposite of science. It's not. It is science. Fiction. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, but so I will click on it. If it says those things, I'm going to click on it. And it's sort of the same thing with the, 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 the Mexico things. And they word it in a way that's like family dies in, and this is true, actually, family dies in Tulum resort town. Yeah. And that wasn't really true. What happened was. Um, they rented an Airbnb and yeah. there happened to be a propane leak. And they died. And they of, died of yeah, carbon monoxide poison. Yeah. Very unfortunate. Yeah, it's really sad. But uh, the media will take that and say family found dead inside resort Tulum. hotel in beautiful town of Tulum. I don't know why they want people to be afraid of destination cities. So as far as even going from the airport to here, really safe, right? Yeah, there's really only a couple things to look for. Don't get in a taxi with two taxi drivers, and then the drive to the hotel, uh, small roads sometimes, and maybe not so well lit. But that that doesn't mean it's dangerous. No, it doesn't mean it's dangerous. It just means that there's not a lot of light, and you should know that you're not being kidnapped. What if you're scared of the dark? I would you turn on your phone flashlight. I would just close my eyes, because then everything's dark. Oh, or maybe break out your glow sticks. Traveling from the airport to the hotel is, I'd say, always safe. I've never heard, I've never had an experience of anything bad happening. Mm -mm. In that I've way. heard a funny story but I've never heard a bad story. Yeah, someone thought they were being kidnapped and we had to tell them, they're, you, you weren't being kidnapped. Somebody was just trying to make their business more efficient. <laughs> And then the other thing is when they drive through the town, they always ask where we live. Do you live in this little town? It's a cute town, but it seems really poor. It seems really dangerous. Yeah. Can we go into town? And the thing is, is we I say this all the time, Americans are great for mistaking poverty with crime. Yeah. It's a poor country. It's economically not as fortunate as a lot of countries out there. So it is the norm. And I'll tell you what, they will drive by, people sweep their porches, they sweep their sidewalks, they sit outside, they just sit outside outside and, and visit with their family and the kids run around and it's a beautiful thing. It's it's this thing instilled in us when, when people look different. It's scary. You walk into town, everybody is a, automatically doesn't look, it doesn't look like your town. It's it, it, They're darker. They have darker hair. People look at you here. In and, the eye, you mean? Yes. <laughs> and, and we're not used to that as Americans. They look at you in the eye and they, they sometimes say hello. Right. And but the, But the looking part can be really misconstrued. Everybody in the United States avoids eye contact. Yeah, it's a strange thing. And when you come here, they do not avoid eye contact. They don't, they don't pretend that you are in a different dimension. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen through this person. <laughs> you are wearing your invisible cloak. We are in the same aisle shopping for the same thing, but we are standing next to one another pretending that we are in complete <laughs> different dimensions. <laughs> Desires, where, where we work, is not in Cancun. It's in Puerto Morelos, which is 35 minutes south of Cancun. Mm -hmm. So it's a tiny little town. But in, in Cancun, the way it's set up is all the hotels are, are pretty much in the hotel zone. Which, which is, is sort of like an island. It's a peninsula. Is it a peninsula? Um, yeah, because you can... But it's like it's separated between a lagoon on one side and then the ocean on the other side. So which is how I would describe a peninsula. That's a peninsula! You're done. You're divorced. All oh. right, slide me the paper. I have e-papers now. <laughs> I just, but my turn, my device is off. I well, you'll as soon as you turn your phone on, you'll get you're getting a divorce alert. I'm not turning it on. Yeah, turn it on. Nope. Turn it on. No. E sign. <laughs>
<laughs> Your documents are ready. Um, you know, divorce reminded me of Millie because Millie is back in our lives. We can talk about that next time. But okay. What was the question? You just were saying that the and if you haven't been to Cancun, the hotel zone is a peninsula. Oh, yeah. yeah, there's no if you're in the hotel zone, when you go to Cancun, you're fine. Like if, if you are scared of traveling in the hotel zone, you should not be allowed to leave your house. Right. Because that it, it's ridiculous. I don't want to hear about it. Don't even ask questions. Don't right. ask me a question. <laughs> That's how ridiculous it is. That hotel zone is like Beverly Hills. If you are afraid of leaving your hotel in the hotel zone of Cancun. Don't leave your hotel room. Don't even travel. Just go to your living room and watch the travel channel. That's, That's it. it. That's a good idea, actually. It's not the worst thing I've ever come up with. Okay. All right. So if you come into Mexico, you have any questions about being safe in Mexico. Two things. Stop reading the news, honestly. <laughs> honestly, read. Don't just read the headlines. Yeah, that's a good idea. And if you read a story, be sure and don't substitute your own words for person, family, in a tourist town. Make sure that you read a tourist was killed, not a person was killed. What is going on down there? They found eight Americans dead. Uh huh. No, they found eight bodies. They didn't find eight Americans. You know, that part of it is ugly. That's the country's problem. Yeah. It is not your problem. I promise you, they're not coming after you. I mean, unless you come here and decide, hey, I'm mm. going to open a, a drug dealing business. <laughs> <laughs> just a side. Yeah, I'm just going to get an LLC. I don't know how you do that there. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, and I'm going to sell some, maybe some hashish or some cocaine. Oh, God. Less. All right. I'm going to turn on. Oh, I'm not going to turn on my devices. If you need to find, if you need to text me, you, you just have to walk upstairs. You need my divorce notice. No, I'm not getting it. Yeah, you should. All right. Goodbye. What are the rules? The rules? I have no rules. I just had a small stroke. All right. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to go. All right. I'm going to be here. All right. I'll see you later. Okay. Bye. Find me a wife. <laughs> I have a few questions for you. Number one, would you be more afraid in Mexico or more afraid in a steam room with Dennis Rodman and Kim Jong-un? <laughs> Fear factor, Dennis Rodman and Kim Jong-un. I, yeah. I agree. Would you feel safer in Mexico or at a Trump rally with a I love Hillary Clinton t-shirt on? Actually, I'd feel safer in Mexico. Safer in Mexico or with Kim Jong-un and Dennis Rodman in a steam room? <laughs> 100% safer in Mexico. Mexico or collaborating anything with Kanye West? <laughs> <laughs> collaborating. If Do people collaborate with him? I, I think they have to. I think they have to. <laughs> this is why I find you two interesting, because you met... Through the through the lifestyle, we met. You are a life, an actual lifestyle cu couple. Right. Success story. Yeah, you're like the mm -hmm. twisted e harmony success story, we right? Are. Very twisted, very twisted. We say that we met on Match.com. That's what you tell everybody. That's Vanilla what you, people. That's what you tell the, the world. We met on Match.com because people want to know how did you meet. We I'm met online. online. Which website? Match. Match. But we met on SLS. SLS. Were you both singles on the website? Yes. yes. Were you on the site as a couple ever? I was on the site as a couple many years ago with my ex-husband. And you were with, also... With, with, with an ex-girlfriend. Okay, so you're both as a couple, and then we deleted that, that photo. Correct. And we changed our profile to single? Single. I was a single yep. there to meet women and couples. Mm -hmm. And I was blocking single men, but I got bored with Match.com because every guy I went on a date with said I was too edgy. After a glass of wine, I just turned on single men on SLS, and it was like hitting that the lottery. That was the day ding, ding, everything ding, ding, changed. Ding, 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 ding. Everything changed. Most of the guys had dick pictures. Uh -huh. He actually had normal pictures of him in having fun, riding a bike, looking hot, looking handsome. And his profile read, I am looking for... A relationship in, in a and out, in and out of the lifestyle. Strong and, alpha female. Confident, attractive, intelligent, edgy. Email. And I thought, I think you found it. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Five years later. And I thought, there's no way a guy is looking for this because most guys I dated in the vanilla world would say that, but they didn't mean it. Now it's five years, right? So you guys are absolutely a success story. Was the lifestyle different after than it was before with your other partners? And for better or for worse? One day he said to me, I have to go to Costco to get groceries. And I said, look, I didn't sign up for this. I signed up for sex and fun <laughs> and the club. And one day he wanted to do something normal. And that, w that was unexpected. It was, it was really like intense weekends, Friday, Saturday clubs, 
you know, just out there. It's, I, mean, I know this is going to sound crazy. It seemed like it, it was like sex every weekend. Oh my God, I'm exhausted. It's, I'm exhausted. Come Monday, I'm like, geez, I need a weekend to recover from yeah, the weekend. Yeah. I was out of groceries. There was nothing <laughs> in the cupboards. There was nothing in the refrigerator. And I was hungry and I wanted to make dinner. I'm like, we're going to Costco and you were deer in headlights. It oh, I didn't sign up for that. I just signed up for woo, 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 woo. Yeah, but yeah. that was a turning that, that, point. That was, a, that was one of the turning points. And I have to say, early on, when we I started to fall in love, at least, there was some jealousy at the beginning of the falling in love part. I would imagine, because you didn't get to go through your honeymoon phase, honeymoon, I put that in quotes, you probably needed to solidify that trust, that honesty, that communication with one another before you re-jump into that world, right? Mm -hmm. to totally. I mean, we still do. It still occurs. It's an ongoing thing. I mean, mm -hmm. It's, it's so much better, yeah, though, because our relationship, yeah. we're committed, we're yeah. trusting, oh, totally. we're honest, totally. and we love each other. Yeah. So it's 10 times better right. than when we were falling in love. Because mm -hmm. I just wanted him at first. Like, I want to be with you once I realized I wanted to be with him. But once we got work through that, then it was like, woohoo! Let's go. It's all about timing, and that's what it was True. with you guys. And everything you learned was a journey and, and an education to where you are now. And I wish you every piece of happiness and lust and love <laughs> in, in the world. Awesome. Did you enjoy the workshop? Oh, oh it was. It totally was cool. I had two yeah. orgasms that I didn't expect, and it was yeah, hot, hot. We, we, you were, tell we, other, were, we were with our uh, uh, hot friend. Everybody. Yeah, you guys. Everybody. Were, your, bed, your bed turned into a little bit of an orgy. A little bit. A little bit. It was very hot orgy, and yeah, sexy. It was good. Thank you so and, yeah. much. We really, this really, is awesome. we really appreciate it. This Thank one, you guys are good hosts. Thank you. In the art of okay, touch stop reading those. We started. Back. I hope they still have it when I go. Does anyone know what they entail? I haven't seen too much on them. Well, that's not our fault. No, I can send him a thread. Does he say when he's coming? 2019 is what the original post said. All right, said. this is too long for me. I don't care. <laughs> That's too far away. Oh, God. They they might be divorced by then. Who knows? By the time he brings it up as much. They may be divorced right now. <laughs> right? Since May. That was May. Yeah. What are we in? Almost, we're September, almost October. Yeah, I don't even know if they're together. Yeah, they're, they're definitely divorced. <laughs> but speaking of divorce, hi. Hi. I haven't spoken to you in so long. So good to talk to you over the microphone. <laughs> well, this is this is how we get to know each other. I know you well. No, you don't. You don't know me. Who are you? Exactly. So today. Yeah. Back at RM. Man day. This week has been long. And it's not over yet. <laughs> we still have one more clap. I already forget what we were talking about. You just said today we were at RM and it's hard. Oh, yeah. It's hard. It's hard for me at RM because I find that there are man-hating man-haters there. I don't know if that's actually a thing. Well, when you say the term man-hater, we automatically think you're talking about women. Right. Man but you're not. Male man haters. Male man haters. This is the man that comes up to the couple or the male part of the couple who male bashes men to, I guess, position themselves to look good in front of the woman. The example I gave you today. Right. Hey, how are you guys doing? I saw you do the announcement. Yes, that was that was us too. Well, the truth is, I didn't even notice you, but I did notice her. Right. Hey, asshole. Like... <laughs> What the fuck was that? Not cool. Hey, not what, what was that? Like, I'm not... Didn't solicit that. So now what happens in your mind is... They're dead to me. Right. This is what I hear. Hey, I saw you up there, but I'm not gay. Right. Okay. Maybe. I don't know. But uh, it's just extreme. I think it's a different thing. What I don't understand... I have to get my voice down in here. Yeah, what my I, mic's really loud in my headphones. I guess they think that it's positioning them to put them in a, look how high I regard women. Yeah, that's what that's I think what it, it is. is. Yeah. yeah, it's like, how would you feel if, if um, we immediately responded back to you? Oh, I didn't even see you standing there. Ooh. I was noticing the couple behind you. We don't even have to be, you know, sex specific. No, I just, I, I don't understand the... The logic. I don't understand the logic. And it happens a lot at RM. I don't think they're hating on you. I just think they're trying to backwards compliment the women. Right, but... But it's so it, they go sacrificial. So, again, these are questions that I can't ask because I'm in the moment. And it would be weird if I was like... Why do you feel... Why, yeah. why, why, why did you just do that, Jeff. <laughs> And you'd be like, what? Be like, why, why are you hating on me? Why, why, are you put, why, are you, 
Why well, I'm just saying, I mean, you know, here, this is what I'm looking at. Yeah, 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 Jeff, I get it, I get it. But you wouldn't walk up to me at, at a birthday party, let's say, for my friend. Kevin. Kevin's Jeff or Kevin. Everyone. If it's more than two people, I ran out of names. <laughs> you, 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 Jeff, are at my friend Kevin's birthday party, right? They're not... They're not in the lifestyle. They're just regular people. Yeah, we're just in the world. And we were, and you walk up to us, and you just made, we just made a speech about Kevin and how much we love him, mm-hmm. right? And then here comes Jeff, and he's like, "Hey, how are you guys? I saw you. You were the one who made the birthday speech, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, I didn't really notice your husband, but I did notice you making that speech. Hey, Jeff, I'm gonna punch you in the throat, right? <laughs> because that's not normal. You wouldn't say that to someone, no, in a normal situation. So why in these heightened situations? Why do people act so silly? I don't know. I, my my take on it was that, and, and this is, could be so, my brain is so off base anyway. I know. That it could be something like, this is how they compliment their wives all the time. You would tell me, honey, trim your nose hairs. It's disgusting. Yeah, take care of your shit. Get Come your on. shit together. You're not an ape. <laughs> well, thank God you never said that. Yeah, and I tell the same thing to you. Like, you need to do this, or you need to do that, or mm-hmm. whatever. I feel like there's marriages where people... People don't do that. I feel like it's, you always look great. Your haircut is great. Your hair color is great. That dress is great. Everything's great. And so they're just so used to bumping up the women that that's how they speak to everybody. Yeah, I guess. I don't know how that really fits into coming home and being like, oh, how does this dress look? Oh, it looks great. It's, it's not like he came home and she was like, oh, how does this dress look? I think it looks great, but did you see the neighbor, Kevin? He looks like an idiot today. (laughs) No, I'm just thinking that maybe men don't know how to speak to women other than to try and compliment them up, but without having necessarily the balls maybe to go up and be like, yeah, I saw you guys up there. You looked hot and... Who are you? I'm her husband. Oh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Now, that's normal. That went pleasantly, didn't it, Jeff? That was easy. This week, it's been a particularly dickish crowd, would you say? And by dickish, we mean it gets a little difficult sometimes to break down that wall. But you've met a a lot of nice people. Yeah, there were a lot of cool people there. But there's sometimes there's... That process. That tight gaggle of people, and they have been vacationing forever together. Every time they go to lunch together, they walk around together, and they're just like, they're all together. And you just, you can't... Can't yeah. penetrate that. No, no pun intended. Well, anybody can penetrate me. Anybody, just with a. <laughs> I one said co- that. One compliment. <laughs> I'm yours, especially there. <laughs> At RM. I'm so easy there. Oh, God. That's uh, so you didn't want to hook up with the conspiracy guy? Conspiracy theory guy? Conspiracy in the, in the pool theory. Today? God, there's so many interesting people. Not really. I know. And then there was like the, the guy who was like, he just kind of float around the pool. And then he was like, hey, man, what's your name again? He literally freaked me out. Yeah, I saw him swimming up and I was like, I'm out, Jeff. Save yourself. I'm out, Jeff Probst. That is not... <laughs> Not oh the, yeah, that's a different. That's not the way we use Jeff. <laughs> that is Jeff Probst. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out of the game. I'm out. That's a survivor um, reference. Um, and then there were some guys that were going to the jacuzzi by themselves. Yeah, that was. That's been happening though. Yeah, I've like been I sat that. down for a coffee with like a couple ladies, and it was like. Where's your husband? Oh, I, he's in the jacuzzi. Yeah, he's in the jacuzzi. And usually we hear the other side of that, which is, where's your wife? Oh, she's sleeping. Yeah, or she's, yeah. Or she's not feeling well. Yeah. Which is not cool, guys, if you're... I'm uh, <laughs> just going to come out. I'm just going to say it. Like, when you're at the hotel, there's a mix of non-lifestylers and lifestylers there. There are people who just like to be in the atmosphere but do not have any inclination or desire to hook up with another person. So you trolling out there by yourself is not really the atmosphere they're looking for at all. This is the reason they didn't go to Hedo. Right, but the the only rule there is that it's couples only in the jacuzzi. That's really the only place where it says just please be with your partner. Right. Everywhere else, you, it's free game. We're just talking about. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Okay. There, this is what amazes me, is we go to the jacuzzi and that guy's there and he's like, well, my wife came down with polio, so she's in the room. <laughs> so I figured I'd come 
out and grab a drink. Now, I've been there now for, I don't know, a lot, a long time. I've never been to that jacuzzi by myself. I won't do it. I just feel too strange. Right. I, you, and by the way, I, I when, have to ask you permission to go to the bathroom, not in the jacuzzi water, but to get out of the jacuzzi because you hate being by yourself in the. Well, you don't have to ask me permission. No, but I, that's not what I meant. But I mean, it sounds like I beat you with a stick. You do. Uh, but it's the size of my thumb. Only people who understand the rule of thumb will get that joke. <laughs> That's what the rule of thumb was. I know. Yeah. <laughs> you told me. Because well, I, how many single women have you found at the jacuzzi? None. Never. Never, never. does that happen. Hey. Never. What are you doing here? Oh, uh, just hanging out. I, I can't see it not happening. Do you know what's funny about when the guys come to the jacuzzi by themselves is they become this sort of amoeba or sort of magnet that floats around. They find a couple and they just sort of float slowly over to the, like the current is carrying them and then that, that's where they'll sort of hang out even if they don't want to talk to them yeah. so they can hide well yeah they don't want to be in a position where they're they look alone yeah so it's hysterical sometimes so they'll be to on the bed and... towards people <laughs> I love it. I, and i don't know what they're waiting for i mean this is what they're waiting for hey what's your name why what are you you're here by yourself you're here by yourself because we were why don't you come to our bed we were looking for a naked middle-aged man <laughs> and here you are where would you feel safer in Mexico or at a Trump rally with an I love Hillary Clinton t-shirt on? Mexico. In Mexico or a steam room with Dennis Rodman and Kim Jong-un? Uh, Mexico. <laughs> Mexico or a private wine tasting tour with Bill Cosby? I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm trying to That's decide if I don't want to say Mexico. <laughs> Where would you feel safer, Mexico or collaborating on anything with Kanye West? Kanye West, that'd be cool. Really? Yeah. He's interesting. He's interesting. Good luck with that. <laughs> you guys, room 87 here with room yep. 87. First time here. Yep. Not in the lifestyle. Nope. Correct. But you're in my or our definition of in the spectrum yes. that we talked in episode something something being in a sexually charged atmosphere. Yes. yes. Yeah. But this is the first time. How did you wind up, you haven't been to a nude beach, you haven't been to a nudist club or, or, or anything. How did you get from there, just in your bed talking, I, mean, I don't know if it was in your bed, you could have been in the car. How did you get there to here? Don't say an airplane. <laughs> you can laugh. We, <laughs> he hides his laugh. <laughs> we, it was on the couch. It probably was. We're our own favorite porn stars. So when we were looking for a resort, we said couples only, uh -huh. and adult, or adults, then couples only, and then we found Desire, and we said, wow, that's really sensual, sexual. And we had seen Temptation, Riviera Maya, and Pearl. And we're a little bit older, we're 51 each, which is, I don't think age You're right in the middle kind of, of the demo here. Yeah. Ages in your mind, not in your body or anything else. And actually, believe Except it or not, Except when you're climbing think, three flights of stairs. Ab go. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, we're in the top I think floor, we're in too. our 40s in our mind, right. maybe. Early 20, I'm 25. 40s. No, you're 20. Me too, yeah, sister. Yeah, 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 yeah for absolutely. sure. Sensual, sexual, couples only. So that's how we found Desire. And nothing freaked you out so far? No, because we had read the forums. Mm -hmm. We had listened to your podcast. Yeah. I mean, we've ha we've heard every episode of your podcast twice. We thank you. And you're our <laughs> listener. We found you. Our, yes, here he is. You're our stars. Having or heard the podcast and read the forums, we knew a little bit what to expect. But it doesn't matter if you think you know what you're going to encounter. Really don't. You really don't. Until you get here, you really can't imagine. Now, has it enhanced your sexuality between one another? Yes. Yeah. 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 Amazing, right? It's yes. an amazing place. It's, yeah. Yes. Can you get can you get any better? Yeah. Have you had to close down your vagina for rest? Oh, that's true. Good question. <laughs> Yesterday was our day. You took Yesterday a day off. was our day off. Because it we was. ate and drank. And it was too our much. 25th anniversary. And oh, it was our day off. I love it. Oh, God. We didn't consummate it. It was after Big Purple. We had to give a rest for Oh, we brought quite the toys. Yes. Yes. Big after Purple. After the toys, yes. Do you think you'll return? Honey? If you'd have asked me two days ago, we wouldn't return because we've, we've been there and done that. But now, two days later, mm -hmm. There's so much we haven't done, so much we haven't experienced. Mm -hmm. And just at the resort here at Desire, it's kind of amazing. It's a wonderful place. 
the service is out of this world. It's the the resort is out of this world. The people, the guests are out of this world. You guys are out of this world. Thank you. It's it really is a wonderful place. So yeah, we'll, we'll be returning at some point in time. We will be return guests. Well, and and you wouldn't even have peg not peg. Oh, that's the wrong. Peg, word. No, no, not peg. use that Who word. Pegging? Pegging? No, 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 no. Nobody. It's Jeff's into pegging. Nobody. It's all coming out now. <laughs> nobody. Nobody. You would have learned pe- a lot of words. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you get a, your lexicon. I really did. Yeah, yeah. I really did. You're yeah. welcome. Yeah. 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 Yesterday, was it yesterday or the day before? It's all a wonderful that blur. We were talking about pegging. Um, <laughs> we're over here. We're in the quiet side of the pool, and then they start to play a game, and it's kinky darts. Uh-huh. And we heard about kinky darts, how the woman distracts the man yeah, as her. the man's trying to throw a dart and vice versa. Yep. And so, her boyfriend Panther called her up. So we're up there naked in front of everybody who's staying at the hotel staying here and we play kinky darts and he i'm sitting on his face on one round and i'm licking you the next round would you have ever imagined that no months ago even a year ago even a week ago a week ago no Time never, your life. Yeah. never. Does Time that make you happy and like kind yes. of giggle inside? Yes, because he's like, yes. Oh, For... we lost, by the way. Oh, oh no, no, you didn't. I'm sorry. We... Last you won. We were last but place. Didn't but didn't freaking matter. matter. But can I tell you how she felt? But she had the biggest smile on her face and said, I had six hands earlier oh, oh my yeah. gosh yeah. wow I didn't thank know you what was what thank you both that was awesome that was wow fun, right yeah thank you Cheers. so Happy much 25th Cheers. you make a great addition we'd love to see you guys come back really oh if we can persuade you oh we'd you, love to see you, you persuaded us to come here i mean no really you're your your podcast, your podcast seriously. It made you know, it okay. It made it, it made wonderful. It okay. Is what it made. So uh, we learned that Mexico is pretty safe. Uh, it's pretty safe most of the time. Right. Uh, we learned that uh, Sarah Clayton is going to be here in November. Uh, so go pose with her. There, there has been, uh, you heard it here first, there's a success story on people who actually met on a lifestyle website who are now together. Yeah, as swingers, you can become a couple and have a successful relationship. I think it was really cool. I mean, they're probably going to get divorced. I mean, to be honest. <laughs> no, probably. come on. I mean, probably. No, yeah. it's just us. Just yeah, you and me. Just you and me. What else do we learn? You don't have to have frequented anything nudist to try it out. And don't be scared of coming to desire. Don't be intimidated. That as much as you read and as much research as you do, you can't really describe what it is until you're actually there. Right. If your wife goes to sleep or goes to the spa, you're not you're not allowed to come to the jacuzzi. You're just not allowed. That's the rule. And we also learned that a for safety, asshole safety, you can do the angry dolphin. Use that if you need to protect your asshole. Or any hole, really, that you don't want them in. That's true. It's it's a versatile sound. Hey, fellas, food for thought for complimenting one half of a couple. Yeah, don't act like you have goggles on that block out men or blinders where you can't see penises because they, they, they're not real. <laughs> we know you're lying. <laughs> All right, that's it. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Be sure and subscribe to the podcast. And we'll pay you back when you get here. And that about does it for us. For more information, photos, or to contact us, go to room77podcast.com. Thanks for stopping by Room 77. We had a blast. Now get your clothes and get out.